uh, they have all the parts, but they don't have the auger, and the auger is what we need. I'm either really tired or just really Canadian. I just said sorry to my tractor. Another day and already some drama. All right, ladies, time to get the board. It is hot to touch. He is looking for his moment. Like, honestly, lucky. <laughs> Morning guys, I thought I would come over here and just have a little chit chat about the last 12 hours. So I think where I left off with you guys, we had just got back into the field after Mark got the auger on the combine going, or we thought we had it going, and he started up again. As soon as it went under load, the shaft inside the auger would spin, but the auger wouldn't, like it would just quit. Uh, so we're in desperate need of a new, of a, a corn head or auger or parts. Uh, they have all the parts, but they don't have the auger, and the auger is what we need. We did call Jeremy, and he's the one that sold us the combine. Asked him if he had any heads available, and the only head he has available is my brother-in-law's, because my brother-in-law's combine just went down as well, and it's going to take till Wednesday, I think, to get fixed. So we're actually stealing his corn head. and we have to get as much as we can get done by Wednesday, which was always the goal. And if we don't have it done by Wednesday, I think he needs it back. So uh, yeah, it's gonna be a couple long days. I'm just trying to kind of mentally prepare. So I thought I'd come over and hang out with my ladies, but they're not doing much for my companionship. Well, they've been scattered. That's nice. Did you do that? Pumpkin Patch 2023. It's on the other side. Yeah. So it's not on the auger. Yeah. Okay, strap. I'm gonna go offset it a little bit. So we'll try to grab it like here. So I want to lift this out so I can pull that this way. Uh, no, I want the smaller one. I don't think it's I guess this day is turning around. Jeremy showed up with a new corn head for us. Not new, like used demo. I don't I don't know. It's like one of the only ones they even have. I made sure with Jeremy that Carl, my brother-in-law, didn't need it. And he said he's good until Wednesday morning, and then he needs it back. So we're gonna go like gangbusters today, tomorrow, and get as much of these last 150 acres off as we possibly can. Um, if everything goes good and the corn's dry enough, if we had like two really long days and the dryer can keep up, I wonder if it isn't beyond the realm of possibility of actually finishing corn by Wednesday morning. I doubt it. I think we need three days, Mark said, but who 
knows? I'm gonna put it out in the universe and maybe I can manifest some positivity after four days of not great things happening. <laughs> Jan came out this morning and fixed, uh, fixed that spreader issue on the back of the combine, so that's working. One problem that Jan found is he's a little freaking out that we might have a bearing going in the combine too, and it's like a pretty major one, so he told Mark to keep an eye on it and keep it greased. I'm either really tired or just really Canadian. I just said sorry to my tractor. <laughs> I hate saying this because I don't want to like put out any vibes, but so far everything is just going so well. The uh, corn head is a beautiful piece of German engineering. I believe it's German. I asked how he was liking it and he said, Marky likey. <laughs> so I'm not really sure if this if this doesn't go back to Uncle Carl, I don't know, it might become a new Brock family member. But uh, I'm actually not sure the status on it. I'm not sure if it's already sold or what. But I, all I know is that in Ontario, probably everywhere, if you break down, there's a lot of scrambling. These sales guys and these guys that are running the roads for us are running around with their heads cut off trying to get people moving again because I think we're just so short everywhere like supply on everything is is low or non-existent I'm not really sure these guys have uh, really got a set of a pinch today so I'm uh, I'm just really grateful <laughs> and I'm really tired I'm so tired We are at 8 o'clock, so we have gone, we've had a really good full afternoon of corn harvest, no real interruptions. Uh, just that buggy issue, it's still that PTO shaft is coming out of uh, the splines down at the bottom still, it's been an ongoing thing. Uh, corn is pretty dry, we're into the 20, we have some 20s, some 21s, some 20, lots of 22s, uh, but it is getting real cold. Like. As soon as the sun goes down, it's freezing out. Jack made us all chili last night for supper, and we had it for lunch today. And let me tell you, this room is not meant for man or beast, but the chili was delicious and I love him for making it. Anyway, my wagon's empty. I'm a cheater. Yes, I am. Good morning, guys. Uh, another day and already some drama. Our dryer has been acting up since one o'clock this morning, so our corn is not dry, and we needed everything to be dry and empty before we start our day today. So I am on my way to the electrical place once again to get a few conductors, capacitors, starts with a C. <laughs> I'm getting really confused, I'm really tired. Um, and hopefully get this dryer going. Jack's looking at it right now with Mark just to see if he can figure out why these why these gremlins are still happening. We thought it was uh, it was really it was going really good yesterday, but um, yeah, today's a new day. <laughs> we have just pulled into our second last farm. Well, actually, it's our last farm. We just have to finish the one that we've been at for the last three days, two days, I think. There's 25 acres left there, and this is a 73 acre farm. So we're doing really well. We're under the 100 acre mark, but we only have this corn head for one more day, and another change of plans our combine needs to go in tomorrow for a full service uh, to get a bearing switch a pretty major bearing needs uh, replaced so we are down tomorrow which for me is okay because I have some sheep jobs I need to do with Carissa so uh, we are gonna plug along here and get as much as we can get off off do you guys remember where I am it's been a hot minute 
Uh, so we ran out of creep feed on Sunday. I ordered it Sunday, I got it today, but the feed truck didn't get here till after Carissa was gonna be gone. So she uh, put some temporary market lamb ration in these feeders, which is okay because they're actually getting weaned next week. Good for them to get a little taste of it. But we did get our creep feed this afternoon. So I am, uh, I'm, I left Mark to unload some wagons so I can grab some creep and get these feeders filled up enough to get us through till morning. The worst thing you can do is let the feeders go empty because they're always used to having feed there. If they go empty, the lambs will probably just eat and eat and eat and eat because they think it's gonna be gone and then what can happen is they can die of grain overload or bloat. So I don't want that, especially the week, literally days before I, before I wean them. We, we don't want that, that would be bad. And I missed you. Bye, combine head. Morning, guys. Our day is starting off with taking the combine to get a new bearing today. Here we go. We had to take the header off. That is the hero of the week. So yeah, I'm following Mark with combine just to town here. Uh, it has a, there's a bearing that sounds pretty nasty when, uh, when Jan came out on Today's Wednesday, Monday, to fix that spinner. He was like, did the combine always sound like this? Mark's like, I, yeah, I think so. And he's like, I think you got a bad bearing. So they squeezed us in today. Uh, they're calling for quite a bit of rain on Friday. So we're hoping they can get it done. We're really hoping we can keep that header. Uh, if Carl needs it today, my brother-in-law, then it has to go back to him. And then we are kind of pooched for getting corn done. The only saving grace is our neighbor, Jeff. I think we'll be done corn today and he's just next road over. So I, I think him and Mark have lined it up. I, I think that if we can't have a corn head before the rain, he might come and just take off that last 25 acres because last night we did indeed get that field done that we were in. So we did, it was a big day yesterday. We did 73 acres, which I think is our record for the whole corn. Uh, harvest. I mean, it's definitely a record for the last five days because we've had nothing but bad luck. So hopefully our luck is turning around. Um, yeah, we got to get this bearing fixed. And then I am going to boogie on home because we have a day of sheep work. Girls, 
left was great. Uh, uh, You'll have to just give me like a... Yeah. I did a little walk around yesterday and noticed that there wasn't a lot of yous that weren't smeared. Maybe a handful? And for me, that's enough to just say, let's pull the rams out. These guys were bred naturally. This is day 21, which would be a typical cycle for if they were cedared. It would, get, it would give every you a chance to cycle twice. Um, but because they're natural, we've definitely got one cycle for all the group. The only ones that wouldn't get two cycles are the ones that were maybe in heat like two days before or three days before I put the rams in. They won't have had that second cycle, but to be honest, I like the ones that breed in the first cycle. Chris and I do our best work at the beginning of lambing, not so much at the end of lambing. So this will just tighten up the group. I might sacrifice a few stragglers, but sometimes it's a pain. It takes up pen space and then it screws up our weaning date because I'll have to wait for the little ones to be old enough to wean. Meanwhile, the big ones are too big and they should have been weaned a week or two earlier. So I think this is a good way to do it. And uh, Hi, Red. You're so pretty. And we're just gonna hope for some decent, uh, some decent results. All right, girls, let's do it. Okay, come on, baby. Come on, baby. Come on, girls. Come on, If you haven't noticed her, I guess that's a good sign. You're so sweet. You're the boy. 
feeling better. She get you feeling better. Okay, we're back across the road for our last market lamb wait. These are the tail enders. They are fast approaching five months old. They are five months old probably, right? June, July, August, September, October. July, August, September, October. November, yeah. Just barely though, because they yeah. were like mid, yeah. But uh, yeah, so we'll run them through and then I'll do a tally up as to what our weights are and stuff at the end. Come on, little one. You gotta turn it. You're the wrong way. There you go. That's. Okay. Zero. 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 Come on, you wanted. Call you tomatoes. You little one. Okay. You're allowed. <laughs> I saw you. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Get special treatment. Yeah. We just finished up here at the barn across the road. So we have 35 tail enders in that group. Uh, let's just go over their stats real quick. I just like keeping track of, you know, first out, last out. 35 lambs, the minimum weight was 62 and a half pounds. We had a couple pretty small ones that just never grew. And then the max weight was 114 pounds. Average weight of the tail enders were 95 pounds. That's crazy, that's awesome. Uh, now, we do have a quite a big group of ewe lambs and we are gonna keep them over there. I do not have enough room in this barn right now. Uh, over the next few months, I'm really gonna have to go through my older ewes. I think last year was 2016, so I was really, really hard on. This year, I'm gonna really have to hone in on 2017 ewes and start pulling them out before they start showing signs of Mady Visna. We know that we have Mady Visna in the flock. I actually lost two ewes last week that were all sheared up and ready to lamb, but they were so skinny. They looked exactly like goat, and they both died within two days of each other. And uh, I knew that was gonna happen. They just 
Uh, the problem with having them full fleeced is you can't see them going, you can't see them getting skinny. So then when Charlie was here, I'm like, whoa. They were older ewes and this is what's happening. You know, if you let them go too long, then they really start to battle it um, and show those symptoms. So I'm trying to kind of keep on top of it before they, they go downhill too, too fast. And those ewe lambs I'm going to keep across the road here, probably for the winter, because uh, they are not going to get bred till next April. So I've got lots of time. The barn's going to be fairly empty because this group that we're weaning next week is a really small group. So I'll have the wean group on the side that I just cleaned out. I'm going to have the ewe lambs where they are. I might push them ahead a bit and then I will have a spare pen at the back that if I if I have to, if the winter gets really dirty, I can pull those ewes, I can pull the golden girls inside and they can have a, a little quarter of the uh, ewe lamb pen and there'll be lots of room for everybody just uh, to get them out and make sure they have water. That's our plan for today and you know me, those plans will likely change tomorrow but it was nice to get back to the barn today. Um, this harvest has been has been stressful these last few days it started out so wonderfully and the weather has been amazing so amazing that it's it's really hard to complain about anything but um i think the biggest thing is it's disconcerting when you're not entirely sure you're going to get the parts or the people to fix your stuff when it breaks because um we're just labor labor is tight and supply is tight so when you know you have like a three day window left to finish 25 little tiny itty bitty acres and you don't have a working combine head and right now you don't even have a combine. Other than that, I have nothing to complain about. We are blessed with with really decent yields and, an, and a harvest window that we haven't seen here for a few years. So uh, a lot to be thankful for, but I cannot wait to get back in the barn. And I am back in this barn now until uh, until spring. So we got a little bit of good news. Well, good news for us, good news for everybody because I think my brother-in-law got his corn head fixed so he doesn't need his demo, which we have to bail us out, which means I think if our combine gets fixed today, we may be able to get corn done tomorrow, which it would just be great. <laughs> it would be really good. What I have to do before I take off with these lambs to market, I we have the dryer fired up again here this morning. We actually ran out of room. Um, Mark had to transfer some corn out of the dryer to put in some bins. Um, so now everything's kind of transferred out and I need to unload the wagons that we filled up last night late. So I'm going to take, I don't know, an hour probably to do that. And then I'm going to ship the rest of the lambs to market. Have a full afternoon all of a sudden. 